Good day YouTube, this is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLike. Today I'm very excited to share with you an ICO that I only discovered a couple of days ago. I think this ICO is going to be a winner. It is Icon's first ICO and it's called Blue Whale. To find out what Blue Whale is and why I'm so excited about this project, keep watching this video. In 2017, there was an independent study commissioned by the Freelancers Union and Upwork. They found that in the year of 2017, 57.3 million people in the US freelance. This indicated that the freelancing workforce in the USA is growing at the rate three times faster than the average workforce. It is estimated that by 2027, 58%, so the majority of the workforce in the US will actually be freelancers. There's another term that is related to freelancing and this is called the gig economy. A gig economy is an environment where organizations contract independent workers for short-term engagements. So the difference between a gig economy worker and freelancers is that gig economy workers work for companies for a short period of time, but freelancers work for themselves. However, both gig economy workers as well as freelancers are not entitled to any employment benefits, example sick benefits or long service leave, because they are essentially self-employed. There are companies that offer their services as middlemen to help self-employed people to find work, example Upwork, Uber, TaskRabbit, Fiverr, etc. However, despite that, self-employed people still struggle with several problems, sometimes these problems caused by these very middleman companies themselves. The three main problems that self-employed people face are number one, high commission rates, number two, expensive market and marketing and advertising, and number three, the lack of security. When we talk about high commissioning rates, most centralized gig sharing economy platforms take between 20 to 50% of commissions from each transaction. Even though places like Uber and Lyft advertise 25% commissions per ride, effectively after you add all the surplus, they really are charging an effective commission rate of up to 42.75. So that's almost half of the workers money gone. Freelancers also need business to survive, and so they are forced to stay with existing centralized platforms despite exorbitant commission uh, rates. Example, big companies like Google and Facebook have a monopoly of the advertising industry. They own 70% of any advertising revenue on the internet. And so because they have the monopoly, they can charge unfairly high advertising costs. The average cost per click on Facebook costs an advertiser $1.72 and on Google it costs more, costing up to $2.32 per click. The cost per action, that means if you act on the click, costs even more. On Facebook it costs up to $18.68 on average and on Google it costs a whopping $59.18. So the average small business today using Google AdWords will spend between $9,000 to $10,000 per month and that works out to $100,000 to $120,000 per year on their online advertising campaigns alone. That is more than some people's annual wage. The third disadvantage that self-employed people face is the lack of security. Existing sharing economy platforms like Upwork do not offer any employment benefits, making freelance work highly precarious for self-employed people. Seizing any form of work due to ill health or family issues basically means zero income. So all of these above disadvantages make it really hard for self-employed person to make a freelance living these days. But this is where the Blue Whale Foundation comes in to try and change these things for the better in a very big way. Blue Whale is essentially offering three solutions to the three problems that we have just identified. And we're going to take a detailed look at each of their proposed solutions. These three solutions are the core of the Blue Whale project. If you understand their three solutions, you understand what the Blue Whale project is all about. The first solution they are offering is Contribution Activity Manager or CAM. And this is the solution against the high commission rates that are being charged. Imagine that this bar represents 100% of a freelancer's payment. At the moment, about 50% of this gets taken up by very high commission rates. 
The whole concept of decentralization is about taking out the expensive middleman who's charging this 50% and redistribute the wealth back to those who deserve it. Blue Whale aims by charging a much fairer commission, so instead of charging a whooping 50%, it might charge something like 20%, and it wouldn't keep that 20% either, but they will give the 20% back in a distributed manner to the community, i.e. to say that the community members who help to maintain the system can earn that 20%. There are a total of six services in the Blue Whale scheme of things that a community member can do to earn Blue Whale tokens. The first is referrals. Referrals is simply the act of bringing new users to the service. The next is lead generation. Now, if referrals is bringing new users to the service, lead generation is bringing new workers to the project. Example, a platform can charge very low fees like this because they have very few staff members, but in turn, they rely on the community members to act as staff. So by bringing more community members on board to help run the project, you are essentially bringing more staff on board and saving the project actual staff cost. And that is the money that is given to lead generation. The third service that someone can do to earn tokens is curation. So this is the act of verifying that the freelancers that enlist are genuine and appropriate. The fourth service is verification and this is the act of confirming the work or product of the freelancer meets a minimum quality. The fifth is arbitration which is the act of resolving a conflict if there is any between the user and the client. The, th the last is what we know as reputation. Reputation is the reputation that any freelancers or service will build for themselves on the platform and this will affect the rewards that they will receive which we will cover very soon. The second key feature of the Blue Wheel project is what is known as the Decentralized Associated Network or DAN. You know how in traditional blockchain projects, you can install mining software to mine for crypto? Well, in Blue Whale, you don't mine uh, through a computer software, but what you actually do is you install an actual business or infrastructure software. So for example, you install an actual booking software or accounting software, and then you lend that software service to the freelancers who are using the platform for free. Which means that unlike any other platform, the freelancers who use Blue Whale platform can do their bookkeeping, marketing and advertising all for free. This alone would make Blue Whale one of the most attractive platforms out there for self-employed people. Anyone from services to individuals can act as nodes to perform this service. So the way I see it is that the core of Blue Whale is not actually blockchain technology. It is actually business apps that are used in a decentralized models. The nodes are not actual um, cryptographic solutions or hash functions kind of a node. They are actually business APIs. Now, the Blue Whale project does use blockchain properties. For example, the links between all the different services is maintained through the use of cryptocurrency token as well as smart contracts help to make the whole system more efficient. But so the concept of the, pro, the, the project is a blockchain project, but the actual core working nodules um, is actually business APIs. It's not proof of stake or proof of work. This is why it is called a decentralized associated network. And the fact that it's not at its core a blockchain um, technology, but just a blockchain concept is actually a good thing. And I'll tell you why. The mother company of Blue Whale is a company that is called Veloco. And Veloco is actually a very successful freelancing platform in US, Canada, Singapore, and now in Japan. So it's already tried and tested. Right? Veloco is the only freelancing platform on the internet that offers already free booking and scheduling software to be installed on providers' website. So this motivates providers to join the network. The retargeting of advertisers to visitors actually lowered their monthly advertising bill from $70,000 to $4,000 only while resulting in an overall 300% higher sales. So the concept of this whole decentralized marketing that they're trying to introduce to Blue Whale, they have already tried and tested it on the logo. It's a working prototype. Now, they have also announced that in the third quarter of this year, the logo will convert completely onto a blockchain model, meaning that it will be the first major customer of Blue Whale in 2018.
So in other words, why am I telling you all this information? Think of it this way. Where in a blockchain ICO, generally, we are taking a very big risk as investors because the blockchain ICO will promise very attractive technology, but there is actually no way of um, actually guaranteeing that the technology will succeed. Whereas in this case, in Blue Wheel, because the underlying technology is not really blockchain technology, it's actually business apps used in a very decentralized manner. And because they already have a working prototype to the local, in other words, they can almost guarantee that their technology will succeed. This alone lowers the risk of investing in it as an ICO tremendously. Furthermore, where other blockchain projects have to hit the market and then start looking for business, Blue Whale is going to hit the market running because immediately it will have a multi-million dollar business for local uh, jumping on to use its service. So ICOs are always high risk investments, but these features um, make it particularly significantly lower for me as an investor. The third solution or core feature of Blue Whale is their reward bank or REBA. 20% of the initial ICO's fund as well as 60% of subsequent profits will be kept in a reward bank. The deposits in the reward bank are then utilized as welfare benefits for the freelancers. Example, pensions, paid leave, sick leave, etc. So if zero booking and scheduling fees weren't attractive enough to attract a self-employed person to use their platform, they are now offering employment benefits which is simply unheard of and unseen in this industry. If you were a self-employed person, there is really no reason to not use this platform. I'm so bullish about this project. I have one more aspect of the project to introduce to you, and that is their governance model or what they call Decentralized Autonomous Organization or DAO. Now, the reason the project is called Blue Whale is because just as the Blue Whale is the largest memo in the world, they are aiming to be the largest employment network in the world. The Blue Wheel project has to be bigger than just for local. For local is only a start. They are aiming to attract different service providers from different industries, and these different service providers, the big providers, will be called provinces. Now, each province will have their own system tailored to their own needs as long as they comply with the Blue Wheel's overarching policies. So it's a bit like federal government and state governments, and the state governments have a degree of freedom as long as they comply with the federal government's rules. Each of these provinces can even mint their own currencies, but to simplify the management of transactions across the entire Blue Whale network, the individual issued coins by each network or each province has to have a fixed exchange rate with the BWX, which is the native Blue Whale token. So in a very decentralized manner, any major decisions that will affect the entire um, Blue Whale economy will be made via a voting system that involves each of these provinces. The provinces have an option. They can opt to be involved in the voting or they can opt to step out of the voting. It's not compulsory. But should they step in, then depending on how much weight they have on the economy, how much token and how much business they have, that's the weight of the voting power for that particular province. But it's all in all a very open and accountable way of governing, almost democratic, that many of us in the Western societies will find intuitive and like. This is the team behind the project. It's a big team and a very solid team. If you include the, the local help that they have, there are a total of 21 names on the team's website. Let me read for you the first three resumes. Now, Will Lee, their CEO, is a serial entrepreneur and has worked in the sharing economy industry for five years. He studied artificial intelligence at Stanford University and he is the owner of a local. Hyojin Choi, or their CTO, he's an expert in computer security with more than 20 years of experience in R&D as well as commercialization. As the head of Advanced Platform Lab at Samsung Electronics, he led the development of software platform which now runs on a wide scale of Samsung devices such as smartphones, tablets, TVs, etc. Now he believes that security is the key to payment technology and so he initiated a secure operating system development and demonstrated a world's first prototype during the 2012 London Olympics in collaboration with Visa. He is also or was one of the chief architects during the Mars Polar Lander project at NASA of USA. He holds a PhD in computer science from Cambridge University. <laughs> wow. 
Cheng Sub Kyum is their CIO. He's a software architect and researcher with 20 years of experience in the ICT industry. His interests include blockchain technologies and software architecture, and most recently he was the research director of a trustworthy network service platform at ETRI, a government-sponsored research institute in South Korea. He got his PhD from Carnegie Mellon University, and he's currently a board member of Korean Software Engineering Society. So, and you can go to the website and look at each of their other members in detail, but on overall, I can say I find this a very impressive team. This is a list of their advisors, which is even more impressive than the team members themselves. I won't go into their resumes in detail, but I'm going to read you some of their titles so that you have a rough idea of who these guys are. One of their advisors is called In Jong Ri, and he's the former CTO and the head of R&D software and services at Samsung. In other words, he was in charge of all software and services globally at Samsung Mobile. The next is Marco Terragrossa, who is the Managing Director at Euro Freelancers and Secretary General at European Forum of Independent Professionals. Another pr advisor they have is Kyung Jong Lee, and he's part of the Icon Foundation Council, as well as CEO at Daily Intelligence. Jung Hot Kim is another Icon Foundation Council member, and he's the CEO at The Loop. Simon Yu, some of you will be familiar, he's the CEO and co-founder of Stormax. And Nam Sik Lee is the president of Suwon University and more. Okay, so it's all in all, I haven't seen such a heavyweight resume in the ICO for quite a while. And so it's refreshing to see such a heavyweight team and it inspires confidence to say the least. One thing I did find surprising is that they don't actually have a big social media following. They have already completed their pre-sale and we are just around the corner from ICO launch. Yet their Twitter only has a thousand, just over a thousand followers. And their Telegram group has just over 2,000 members only. For a project of this scope with icon backing, I would have expected about five or ten times uh, more members. So especially if you are into a quick trade, like some people do, they just buy an ICO at a very low price and they aim to trade out once it hits the exchange. The rise when a coin hits the exchanges is really due to the popularity of the coin. That means the coin has to have a lot of awareness uh, for the price to rise once they hit the market. Uh, but with this coin, it seems that at the moment, the market awareness is not that high. Or maybe it's just because people are more cautious towards ICOs these days. Uh, personally, I'm very bullish about this project, so I'm actually happy about the low popularity because I want to hodl this coin, so I'm glad it's under the radar because that means that there are less people to compete with me at the ICO. Uh, but that's because I have faith in the long-term success of the project, so I don't mind if it's not popular at the moment. So the uh, low social media count can be a good or bad thing depending on how you look at it, but it definitely is a much smaller number than we would have expected. This is their roadmap. It's a very long roadmap that goes into 2021. Nonetheless, it's also a very fast-paced roadmap. So they have testnet in this quarter as well as the public token sale. The integration with the local is happening next quarter already. And the DEM protocol is expected to be implemented by the fourth quarter. Also by the fourth quarter, the end of this year, the Blue Whale Network Alpha will go live in US, Canada, Singapore, and Japan. And in 2019, we will see the other core features being released one after another in each quarter. And in 2020 first half, we see a retirement reward protocol being launched. So wow, this is huge, retirement reward. And in the second half of 2021, they are going to launch a uh, what's that? Insurance reward protocol. So that's a huge incentive for people to use their network and platform in the long term. The roadmap ends in 2021 with what they call the Freelance Economy Global Standard Protocol. I'm guessing this means that the infrastructure for global projects is completed, but I may be wrong. I don't quite understand what this means. But overall, you can see, guys, this is going to be a long hurdle. So if you can believe in this project, this project is aiming to be the biggest freelancing protocol in the world. It's very ambitious. To be the biggest freelancing protocol in the world means that it's aiming to be bigger than even Uber. So can you imagine getting into Uber in this ICO phase? This is not a chance that passes by every day. At least that's my own thoughts to myself. Finally, we're going to look at their token mechanics. 
the total supply is 100 billion tokens and that's a staggeringly large amount or number of tokens but if you consider their scope and how they plan to be the world's biggest freelancing platform and a lot a lot of transactions and payments happening you have you can sort of understand why they need to have such a big number of tokens more importantly we want to look at their market cap their hard cap for the fundraising stage is 55 million. So even if they hit their hard cap, right? For those who don't know what hard cap and soft cap are, okay, soft cap is the minimum amount that you need to hit as an ICO. And if you don't hit the soft cap, you basically fail as an ICO and you have to refund all your investors the amount that they put in. Okay, uh, but if you cross the ICO, you're considered a successful ICO. The hard cap then is quite a high number that most ICOs don't hit, but it's basically the ceiling, the maximum number of tokens that you can sell in a stage. And for this project, the maximum hard cap is 50% of their total tokens, which is set at 55 million at the moment. Um, even if they were to hit their hard cap, right? They don't have to hit, they only have to hit 25 million. But even if they hit their hard cap of 55 million, that would place them at the moment at um, number 215 on the market ranking. When I look at this uh, ranking, I'm thinking to myself, there is no way a project of this magnitude is going to be ranked solo, 215. I mean, this to me is easily a top 100 coin, a top 50 coin even. Um, and by the way, guys, just on a side note, if you've noticed, we've actually changed our charts. We're not using coin market cap. We've actually swapped to using coin codex. Someone suggested this to us on our Telegram, and we took a look, and we really like this website. I think it's a lot better than coin market cap. We're going to cover more features of coin codex over the next few videos when we actually do coin reviews and use the market graphs more. But if you do have five minutes to spare, uh, I definitely recommend checking out coincodex.com, which is my new favorite coin pricing website. All right, coming back to the ICO sale. In the pre-sale, which ended recently, they had a 10% discount only. So that's good, right? You don't want a pre-sale with like a 40, 50% discount because the discrepancy then would be too big. It means that those people got too much of a discount, which risk a big dump once the coin hits the exchanges. In addition, they also implemented a three-month lock-in period for those who got in during the pre-sale um, sale recently. The ICO itself is due in May, so that's very, very soon. Some are guessing that it's going to happen on the 1st of May, but that's just rumors. It's not actually confirmed by the team yet. When the ICO does come out, you can purchase uh, the Blue Whale tokens with either Icon or Ether, but you have to register on their whitelist now if you want to be part of that ICO. So all in all, I think the token mechanics seem quite unremarkable, nothing really outstanding. Uh, they do have a slightly higher hard cap, and they, their community is small, okay? For a normal project, you could wonder whether or not they will have trouble to hit their hard cap. But their soft cap is only 25 million. It's not hard to hit because they already hit their pre-sale at 16 million very easily. So personally, I think because they have the icon community awareness, this coin will probably hit the hard cap. Uh, and personally, I find 55 uh, million hard cap as a very attractive entry price, but that's just my opinion. Some people might find it a bit expensive. The last thing I want to add before ending is that currently there is no competition for Blue Whale in the blockchain space. There is no other blockchain trying to uh, do what it is doing. It's a completely novel idea. StormX is probably the closest project, but StormX is gametizing micro tasks, so more like bounty kind of tasks. It's not actually aiming at freelancers. If you had watched our review on StormX, I actually ended the video by saying that if the StormX could target the freelancing platform market, it would have so much potential to grow. So targeting the freelancing uh, market as a blockchain idea is something that I've been keeping my eye out for. And to see it actually happen now just makes me really excited. Furthermore, with such a solid team and a working prototype already, and on top of that being Icon's first ICO, um, I'm just very bullish on this coin. I personally think that Blue Whale is going to be a game changer, and I'm going to get into it personally. And as always, this is just me sharing my personal journey with you and my thoughts and the decisions that I make. Uh, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a professional. I'm not a financial advisor. So please always do your own research and make your own decisions. So that's it, guys. That's my take on Blue Whale. 
Drop us comments below to let us know what you think of Blue Whale. And if you found this video helpful, do drop that like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our future content. Also, check out our past coin reviews. We are on a very ambitious journey to try and build the biggest library of crypto coin reviews on YouTube. So we love to know what you think and how we can improve. Thanks very much for joining us. Have a great day wherever you are and we will catch you next time.